Oh my god. Doc Holliday, known for his sharp wit, deadly skills, and unwavering loyalty. He was a dentist turned gunslinger who became a key player in some of the most famous events of the American frontier. From his beginnings as a Southern gentleman to his rise as a feared gunslinger, gambler, and close ally of Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday's life is a tale of adventure, conflict, and survival against the odds. Join us as we separate myth from reality, revealing the complex and fascinating man behind the legend. Introduction and initial encounter. Doc Holliday, a name that echoes through the annals of the American Old West, was born John Henry Holliday on August 14, 1851, in Griffin, Georgia. His early life was marked by academic excellence and a promising career in dentistry. Despite his southern roots and refined upbringing, Holliday's destiny led him far from the genteel profession of tooth extraction. In 1873, at the age of 22, Holliday graduated from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery. Soon after, he set up a practice in Atlanta, Georgia. However, his promising career was abruptly interrupted when he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, a devastating disease that had claimed his mother's life. Doctors advised him to seek a drier climate to prolong his life, leading Holliday to venture westward, where the arid environment of the frontier town seemed more favorable for his health. Holliday's move to the West marked the beginning of his transformation from a genteel dentist to a notorious gunslinger. His journey first took him to Dallas, Texas, where he hoped to continue his dental practice. However, his persistent cough and declining health made it difficult to maintain a steady clientele. To support himself, Holliday turned to gambling, a common occupation in the lawless towns of the Wild West. His sharp mind and keen observational skills served him well at the card tables, where he quickly gained a reputation as a skilled gambler. It was in Fort Griffin, Texas in 1877 that Holliday's path first crossed with that of Wyatt Earp, a lawman who would become his closest friend and ally. Their initial encounter was far from ordinary. Wyatt Earp was on the trail of Dave Rudabaugh, a notorious outlaw. The search led him to John Shancy's saloon, where he learned that Rudabaugh had been in town earlier but had since left. Shancy directed Earp to Doc Holliday, who had recently played cards with Rudabaugh. Despite Holliday's notorious reputation, and his well-known animosity towards lawmen, Earp approached him. To his surprise, Holliday was unexpectedly cooperative, providing Earp with valuable information about Rudabaugh's whereabouts. Holliday believed that Rudabaugh had headed back to Kansas. Acting on this information, Earp telegraphed Bat Masterson, the sheriff of Dodge City, who successfully apprehended Rudabaugh. This unlikely cooperation between a lawman and an outlaw marked the beginning of a legendary partnership. The bond forged between Holliday and Earp at Shancy's saloon proved pivotal in the tumultuous years that followed. Their alliance would be tested repeatedly, most notably during the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. Doc Holliday's confrontations. Doc Holliday's life was punctuated by numerous confrontations, both large and small, that contributed to his legendary status in the American Wild West. Known for his sharp wit, quick temper, and deadly accuracy with a gun, Holliday's altercations often ended in violence, cementing his reputation as a fearsome gunslinger. One of Holliday's most famous early confrontations occurred in Dallas, Texas, where he had moved to seek a drier climate for his tuberculosis. While working as a gambler, Holliday frequently found himself in dangerous situations. In January 1875, he was involved in a heated argument with a local saloon keeper named Charles Austin. The dispute quickly escalated, leading to gunfire. Holliday shot Austin, although the wound was not fatal. This incident added to Holliday's growing notoriety and established him as a man not to be trifled with. Morgan. Doc. Virgil. Oh, Doc. Holliday's reputation for violence followed him to Dodge City, Kansas, a rough and tumble frontier town where law enforcement struggled to maintain order. It was here that he solidified his friendship with Wyatt Earp. Together, they navigated the treacherous world of gambling halls and saloons. In 1878, Holliday's confrontational nature was on full display 
when he had a run-in with Ed Bailey, a fellow gambler. Accused of cheating at poker, Bailey threatened Holiday, who responded by slashing Bailey's throat with a knife in self-defense, killing him instantly. This incident forced Holiday to flee Dodge City to avoid lynching by an angry mob. No, make no mistake. It's not revenge he's after. It's a reckoning. Holiday's most infamous confrontation came in Tombstone, Arizona, during the gunfight at the OK Corral on October 26, 1881. Tensions between the Earp brothers and the Clanton McClory gang had been escalating for months, fueled by political and personal rivalries. On that fateful day, Doc Holliday stood alongside Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan Earp against the Cowboys. The 30-second shootout left three men dead, Tom McClory, Frank McClory, and Billy Clanton. Although Holliday was wounded, he survived the battle, further enhancing his reputation as a deadly combatant. Another notable confrontation occurred in Leadville, Colorado in 1884. Holliday, by then in poor health and struggling financially, got into an altercation with Billy Allen, a local man to whom he owed money. When Allen threatened Holliday over the debt, Holliday responded with characteristic violence, shooting Allen and wounding him. Though arrested and tried for attempted murder, Holliday was acquitted, largely due to his poor health and the sympathy of the jury. Throughout his life, Doc Holliday's confrontations were driven by a combination of his volatile temperament, his precarious health, and his unwavering loyalty to friends like Wyatt Earp. Doc Holliday and Big Nose Kate, the relationship between Doc Holliday and Mary Catherine Haroni Cummings, better known as Big Nose Kate, is one of the most intriguing and tumultuous tales of the Wild West. Their bond, characterized by passion, volatility, and mutual dependence, offers a glimpse into the complex dynamics of life on the frontier. Their paths first crossed in Fort Griffin, Texas, in 1877. Kate, a Hungarian-born prostitute, caught the eye of the charming yet often brooding Holiday. Despite their disparate backgrounds, Kate from a troubled upbringing, Holiday a dentist turned gambler, their connection was immediate and intense. Their relationship was marked by frequent arguments and reconciliations, fueled in part by Holiday's struggles with alcoholism and Kate's fiery temper. Despite the challenges, they remained fiercely loyal to each other, facing adversity together in a world where survival often depended on cunning and grit. One of the defining moments of their relationship occurred in Dodge City, Kansas, where they found themselves embroiled in the volatile atmosphere of the frontier. In 1878, Holiday's confrontation with Ed Bailey, which resulted in Bailey's death, forced them to flee Dodge City to escape the wrath of an angry mob. Throughout their time together, Kate served as both a source of comfort and a catalyst for conflict in Holiday's tumultuous life. Despite their deep affection for each other, their relationship was fraught with instability. Holiday's gambling and drinking habits strained their bond, leading to frequent separations and reconciliations. Kate's own struggles with alcoholism and a tumultuous past added further complexity to their dynamic. Their relationship reached a breaking point in 1881 when Holiday, weary of Kate's abusive behavior while intoxicated, finally ended their tumultuous union. The split was painful for both parties, marking the end of an era characterized by passion and volatility. Despite their separation, the bond between Doc Holliday and Big Nose Kate endured in the annals of Wild West lore. Their story, immortalized in countless books and films, serves as a testament to the enduring power of love and loyalty in the face of adversity. In the years following their breakup, both Holliday and Kate continued to lead colorful and often turbulent lives. Holliday's exploits in Tombstone, Arizona, including his involvement in the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral, further solidified his status as a legendary figure of the American West. Kate, meanwhile, found herself drawn back to the world of prostitution and saloon life, struggling to find stability in an ever-changing frontier landscape, life in Dodge City. Life in Dodge City during the late 19th century was a microcosm of the tumultuous and lawless frontier era. Situated on the Santa Fe Trail in Kansas, Dodge City earned a reputation as one of the wildest and most dangerous towns in the American West. 
The town attracted a diverse array of individuals seeking fortune and adventure, including cowboys, gamblers, outlaws, and lawmen. The streets of Dodge City bustled with activity, with saloons, brothels, and gambling halls lining the main thoroughfares. It was a place where fortunes could be won or lost in a single hand of cards, and where disputes were often settled with a quick draw of a gun. Law enforcement in Dodge City was a constant struggle against rampant lawlessness. The town's most famous lawman, Wyatt Earp, along with his friend Doc Holliday, sought to maintain order in the face of overwhelming odds. However, their efforts were often thwarted by powerful criminal elements and a lack of resources. Violence was a common occurrence in Dodge City, with frequent clashes between rival factions and individuals seeking revenge for perceived slights. Shootouts and brawls were a regular part of life, and the streets were often stained with blood. Despite the chaos, Dodge City was also a place of opportunity for those willing to take risks. Entrepreneurs capitalized on the town's lawless reputation, opening saloons, brothels, and gambling establishments to cater to the influx of settlers and travelers passing through. For many residents, life in Dodge City was a precarious balancing act between survival and self-destruction. The allure of quick wealth and adventure often led to ruin, as countless individuals fell victim to the temptations of gambling, alcohol, and violence. Nevertheless, Dodge City was also a place of camaraderie and resilience, where residents banded together in the face of adversity. The town's sense of community was forged in the crucible of the frontier as individuals from all walks of life came together to carve out a new existence on the western frontier. Conflicts and Legal Troubles Doc Holliday's life was fraught with conflicts and legal troubles, a consequence of his association with the turbulent frontier and his own volatile nature. Throughout his years in the Wild West, Holliday found himself embroiled in numerous altercations and legal entanglements further cementing his reputation as a legendary figure of the era. One of the most notable conflicts in Holiday's life was his involvement in the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona in 1881. Alongside his friend Wyatt Earp and his brothers, Holiday faced off against a group of outlaws known as the Cowboys, resulting in a deadly shootout that left several men dead and wounded. Despite being acquitted of murder charges related to the gunfight, Holiday's reputation as a gunslinger and a troublemaker only grew. Legal troubles followed Holiday wherever he went, often stemming from his propensity for violence and his involvement in gambling and other vices. He was frequently arrested on charges ranging from assault to murder, and he spent considerable time navigating the legal system of the Old West. Holiday's confrontations with law enforcement were not limited to shootouts and brawls. He also faced numerous legal challenges, including extradition requests and court proceedings. Despite his fierce reputation, Holliday sometimes found himself at the mercy of the law, facing fines, jail time, and even the prospect of execution. Despite his legal troubles, Holliday remained defiant and unapologetic, refusing to back down in the face of adversity. His unwavering determination and quick wit often helped him navigate precarious situations, earning him the respect and admiration of both friends and foes alike. In the end, Holiday's conflicts and legal troubles were an integral part of his larger-than-life persona, adding depth and complexity to his legend as a Wild West outlaw. His willingness to stand up for himself and his friends in the face of danger only served to solidify his status as a true frontier legend. Tombstone and the OK Corral Tombstone, Arizona, and the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral are forever entwined with the legend of Doc Holliday. You know, Ed, if I thought you were my friend, I just don't think I could bear it. The small mining town of Tombstone became the backdrop for one of the most iconic events in Wild West history, where Holliday's notoriety reached its peak. The gunfight at the OK Corral, which occurred on October 26, 1881, is perhaps the most famous event associated with Doc Holliday. Alongside his close friend Wyatt Earp and his brothers, Holliday faced off against a group of outlaws known as the Cowboys. The confrontation erupted in a deadly shootout in a narrow alley next to the OK Corral, resulting in several casualties on both sides. Despite the brevity of the gunfight, 
its impact reverberated far beyond the streets of Tombstone, solidifying Holiday's reputation as a gunslinger and a legendary figure of the Old West. The events leading up to the gunfight were steeped in tension and animosity between the Earps and the Cowboys, who were engaged in a bitter feud over control of the town. Holiday's presence added fuel to the fire, as his reputation for violence and his loyalty to the Earps made him a target for the Cowboys' ire. 500. Must be a peach of a hand. Following the gunfight, Holiday and the Earps faced legal scrutiny and public scrutiny, with opinions divided over the righteousness of their actions. While some hailed them as heroes who stood up to lawlessness, others condemned them as vigilantes who took the law into their own hands. Despite the controversy surrounding the gunfight, it cemented Tombstone's place in American folklore and immortalized Doc Holliday as a Wild West legend. Today, the site of the OK Corral is a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors from around the world to witness a piece of history and pay homage to the brave souls who shaped the destiny of the American West. Revenge and continued conflict. After the gunfight at the OK Corral, the feud between the Earps and the Cowboys escalated, leading to a cycle of revenge and continued conflict that would shape the legacy of Doc Holliday and his companions. Morgan Earp's assassination in March 1882 intensified Wyatt Earp's thirst for vengeance. Blaming the Cowboys for Morgan's death, Wyatt, along with Doc Holliday and a posse of supporters, embarked on a relentless pursuit of justice. Their quest for retribution led to a series of violent encounters, including the killings of Frank Stilwell and Curly Bill Brocious. The Earp Vendetta Ride, as it came to be known, was marked by a string of confrontations and skirmishes across the Arizona Territory. Holiday, ever loyal to his friend Wyatt, played a central role in these events, using his skills as a gunslinger to confront the Cowboys and exact revenge for Morgan's death. Despite their efforts to mete out justice, the Earps and Holiday found themselves on the wrong side of the law. They were pursued by authorities and faced legal troubles, including arrest warrants and accusations of murder. However, their determination to avenge Morgan's death outweighed the risks, and they continued their pursuit of the Cowboys with unwavering resolve. The vendetta ultimately culminated in a series of deadly confrontations, including the killings of Curly Bill Brocious and Johnny Barnes. While these acts of retribution brought a sense of closure to the Earps and Holiday, they also left a trail of bloodshed and violence in their wake. The vendetta also took a toll on Holiday's health, exacerbating his tuberculosis and hastening his decline. Despite his failing health, Holiday remained committed to his quest for justice, determined to see it through to the end. In the end, the vendetta proved to be a double-edged sword for Holiday and the Earps. While it brought a measure of satisfaction and closure, it also left scars that would never fully heal. The legacy of the Earp Vendetta ride continues to be debated and scrutinized to this day, with Doc Holliday's role in the event serving as a testament to the complexities of justice, revenge, and the enduring allure of the Wild West. Later Years and Final Days In his later years, Doc Holliday's health continued to deteriorate as tuberculosis ravaged his body. Despite his illness, he remained a figure of intrigue and fascination in the West, with his reputation as a skilled gambler and gunslinger preceding him wherever he went. Holiday's final days were spent in a constant battle against the ravages of disease. Yet he faced his fate with characteristic stoicism and defiance. Seeking relief from his symptoms, he sought out the healing waters of the Yampa Hot Springs and Sulphur Vapors in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. However, even these therapeutic measures offered little respite from his suffering. In May 1887, Holiday checked into the Hotel Glenwood in Glenwood Springs, where he spent his final days confined to a bed, experiencing bouts of delirium and pain. Despite his declining health, he remained defiant and unyielding, refusing to let his illness define him. On November 8, 1887, Holiday awoke with a moment of clarity and requested a glass of whiskey savoring it as he drank it down. His final words, this is funny, spoke to his irreverent sense of humor and acceptance of his impending demise. Doc Holliday passed away later that day at the age of 36, 
leaving behind a legacy that would endure long after his death. His obituary, published in the Leadville Carbonate Chronicle, hailed him as a fearless and loyal companion who had earned the respect and admiration of those who knew him. Despite his troubled past and involvement in the violence of the Wild West, Doc Holliday's memory lives on as a symbol of the rugged individualism and frontier spirit that defined an era. His story has been immortalized in countless books, films, and legends, each offering its own interpretation of the man behind the myth. In death, as in life, Doc Holliday remains an enigmatic figure, his legacy shaped by the tumultuous times in which he lived and the indelible mark he left on the history of the American West. Though his final resting place may be lost to time, his legend continues to captivate and inspire all who hear the tale of the gambler, gunslinger, and true Western legend, Doc Holliday. Thanks for watching another episode. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.